Hello, welcome to the Geek Show. Let's talk about some games, shall we? Today it's Someday You'll Return from CBE Software. This one is much in the vein of the last video game that we talked about on the channel. It is uh, Moon's Madness. Moon's Madness was a walking space horror game. Well, walking simulator in space. Very much uh, in uh, in ideas and execution. Uh, it owed a lot to Lovecraft and his idea of horror, well, all the horrible racism and sexism. <laughs> this is much more down to birth in that you are a dad looking for his missing child. It's obvious, it's been done in a lot of things, but it was also in um, the original Silent Hill. And even though number two gets a lot more of the adulation, probably deservedly so, number one has a much bigger place in my heart. Because it's the first, and the first is always the best. Or has the fondest position in your memory anyway. In this one, uh, you start the game as the, the daughter who's gone missing in this weird dungeony reality. There's noises, you hide from them, you get to this point where you basically look like you're going to escape, but a shadowy figure descends. And then it jumps to the dad. Through a moody montage, him driving and driving and driving and angry phone calls, you get to the forest. It seems cut and dry, as in you go, go through a little bit of woodland and you get to this bunker. You go in the bunker, you see a mysterious figure, much like the sort of figure you might see in a Silent Hill game. He bonks you on the head, and then the game opens up entirely. Silent Hill is a good comparison point for it, because it jumps between two sorts of realms. There's the reality in which you make human characters, and you're in there a campsite which has like a significance to the characters um, and the history of the characters but it's gone into a, a massive state of disrepair so you have to solve a lot of puzzles um, figure stuff out follow the map you get poisoned figure things out as far as curing yourself but I'll, I'll come back to that that's re relevant for later and the other aspect of it is a cracked reality in which you have these these monsters well they just look like they could kill you by looking at you which is a uh, very foreboding and you have like a interaction with a young girl who implies that this story might not be as cut and dry as this is a dad a loving dad who wants his kid back there might be more going on there as far as the state of mind of the characters as far as the history of what's happened here I don't know how to approach this, so let's just jump back to that thing that I was talking about a few moments ago about putting things together and finding cures the poisons. A big part of the game is, I won't call it crafting so much, so let's use an anecdote. There's the, the obvious one that I just mentioned there, you get poisoned and you have to go around a priest's garden uh, collecting flowers and creating concoctions to get the right effect and allow you to go on with the game um, because as, uh, at that point you develop vertigo where you're unable to cross over bridges you become incredibly disorientated you hear your voices and all this sort of stuff you got to craft potions to get rid of that there's also a case where at the very beginning you have to get past the massive crater in the earth which is just opened up so you got to fix a ladder by pulling apart mysterious little crosses in the ground and hammering them into a broken stepladder. So it has you interacting with the world in not in an incredibly detailed way, but detailed enough. So it keeps you on your toes, keeps you thinking, and that's the way the puzzle mechanics of the game comes in. It has a nice sense of identity, even if it's not breaking any moulds. Um, in, the, in the real world, in the ma magical fantasy world, it has... I don't know how I'd describe this. That sort of essence of Silent Hill about it, but you remove the fog. It has like spectres that may or may not be manifestations of guilt or whatnot. They just look odd and imposing and threatening. But the problem is, not so much with the game. Oh, no, that, that wouldn't be the right way to put it. It is with the game and it isn't with the game. Essentially, what I'm dancing my way around saying is, this is a type of game, it's a survival, well not survival, it's a walking simulator in which you go from place to place, solving solve puzzle to puzzle, you jump from one plane of reality to the other, things come out, you got to hide from them. If you've played any sort of first person walking simulator horror game, 
there's nothing new here. This is the sort of game with Outlast, with, with games like that, and Soma, and what, what have you. They are the, the games which basically showed the wider world that horror could actually be a viable piece of entertainment, a style of video game in the modern gaming. But it's got to the point now where this style has gone through so many different iterations, different styles. Developers have taken this on board and moved on to new things. I mean, look at uh, the people who've done the Blair Witch games. They've gone on to the new one, which looks really interesting, although very similar to what this is, uh, the medium. It's very, very hard for a game like this to not feel like you're just going through the motions. It's not really commenting on this being bad, because it's not. It has a very distinct sense of identity. It plays well. It's just nice to spend time in it. Well, nice in a horror sense. So, not nice. The opposite of nice. Um, bleak and atmospheric. But my point is, it's just another one of this type of game. As good as it is, or as bad as it is, it's just another one. And if you're really a fan of this, by all means, go ahead and play it. But it's hard to maintain your interest when you've seen it all and done it all. I think is my major takeaway. Which is a shame, really, because there's a lot of talent on screen here. And, yeah, that's someday you'll return. 